All right. Um, so I want to talk briefly about Earth's energy budget before we start today's activity on terrestrial atmospheres and temperatures. So what do I mean when I say energy budget? Um, I mean that there's so much energy that comes to Earth in the form of sunlight, and something has to happen to all that energy. Um, you might have heard before, energy is conserved, it's neither created or destroyed. And so that's the principle that we have to use when we consider what happens to the energy that strikes Earth. So because it can neither be created or destroyed, that means that there has to be some sort of way that Earth um, gets rid of energy to equal the amount of sunlight that hits it. So what happens? Well, Earth is a warm object. It has some temperature that is um, you know, greater than that of space. And so because of that, it is radiating infrared light. And infrared light is, um, I mean, you might know it as heat. Um, it's essentially a longer wavelength form of light. Um, and any, any object with a non-zero temperature creates some kind of radiation for planets like Earth and also for objects that are temperatures similar to our body temperatures those objects create infrared. So you and I are also putting off infrared radiation. That's why like, if you've ever been able to go to like a science museum and play with an infrared camera, um, you'll see that, you know, you can pick out the parts of yourself that are warmer because they're giving off more of that infrared light. Okay, so earth is radiating infrared light into space due to its temperature. And that has to be equal in total amount to the sunlight that is hitting it. And that's what we would call an equilibrium. So it's a situation where the energy is balanced. So energy in equals energy out. So this is what our energy budget looks like if I was gonna write down that equation. And considering first the case where Earth has no reflection on its surface, if the sunlight, if we count up all the amount of energy in all the light hitting Earth from the sun, that has to be exactly equal to the amount of light radiated by Earth. Okay, so um, these factors have specific scientific names. The sunlight hitting Earth is called energy flux, which we talked about last time. And the light radiated by Earth, um, it's not called temperature, but it um, is governed by the temperature of our surface. So a question, if the earth absorbs more light from the sun, it will get hotter. What then would happen to the infrared light that the earth emits? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for option three and that's exactly right. So if we absorb more light and our temperature becomes higher, then we will emit more energy as infrared light. So this is what keeps earth in balance. If we increase the sunlight hitting Earth, we also increase the infrared light radiated by Earth and our energy balance is restored. All right, so other things can happen though. So not all of the sunlight hitting Earth reaches its surface. Um, some of it is reflected by the edge of our atmosphere. Some of it is reflected by things like ice and snow on the Earth's surface. And so not all of the sunlight makes it to heat Earth's surface. So if we consider the reflected sunlight, that means that we need to consider how much is uh, reflected in order to get how much infrared light needs to be rated by Earth to match these two factors coming in. So if I take my sunlight in minus my reflection, I get my infrared radiation out. So this governing equation hasn't changed, but we are considering now additional factors. So consider that there's, for example, uh, more snow across the Northern Hemisphere where there are more continents in the winter. So in the Northern Hemisphere winter, we have more snow, we reflect more light. What would happen to the infrared light the Earth emits in this case? All right, so I'm seeing most votes for one, if, the, if there's more reflection, then there's less total energy coming in. So there needs to be less total energy going out. 
So less energy would be emitted as infrared light. So to visualize that relationship, if the reflected sunlight amount goes up, then that means that this entire side of the equation is going to decrease. And therefore the other side of the equation, infrared light out, that also needs to decrease. All right, so this is just one example of something called a feedback loop. So if there's some sort of change in one part of a system, the other part of the system has to change in response to that. Okay, so this leads to something we call the equilibrium temperature. And that is a temperature at which the input energy and the output energy are equal. So if one part of the system changes, the other part of the system responds, and then the entire system changes in temperature until we are now at equilibrium again. So the temperature of Earth changes until this energy balance is restored. It can change up, it can change down, depending on how the factors on this left-hand side of the equation shift. 